Good evening, everybody. Welcome to the motivational call on Sundays by Andrew. Andrew's been struggling with connection issues uh, for quite a few weeks. So, uh, I didn't expect too many people, but a lot of people watch the recordings. Andrew, fly away. Dazzle us with a good message, please. I'll try. <laughs> Well, good evening, those of you that are on the call, and thanks for, for joining us. And um, <clears throat> yeah, sorry, it's been a couple of weeks. Last week, I couldn't get my computer to connect to the internet and thought there was a virus. And eventually, after six hours of trying, I gave up. And then a friend of mine called me and gave me some information and told me to push this and press that and stand on my head, and then it worked. So anyway, we're back. What I want to um, touch on tonight is the power of one. The power of one. Unity. Unity. Because when there is unity, anything is possible. Anything. No matter what you put your mind to. When there is unity, anything is possible. The world can be changed where there's unity. Lives can be touched, situations transformed, where there's unity. But it starts with the power of one. It starts with you. Scripture says that we must be united in ourselves, first of all, and then united as a body, as a collective. What do I mean when we say united as one? Where everything inside of you body, soul, and spirit align with one vision, one purpose, one understanding. When there is unity in your being, then you live in harmony with yourself and your creator. There is no such thing as harmony where there's no unity. Go have a look at some of the old music texts that were written by some of these incredible composers, Mozart and Bach. Look at those things. Look at how harmony is created in the unity of those notes as they flow. Where there is no unity, there can be no harmony. In fact, another description of unity is harmony. So in yourself, individually, you have to work to finding unity. Get your physical body in line with your spiritual being. Get your soul to align with everything that needs to happen in this physical form. Because we are just spiritual beings having a temporary physical experience. But we've got to get the physical to align and connect with what God's vision and purpose is for your life. When you are in unity with yourself then it's easy to start attracting the other pieces of the puzzle around you that form the bigger picture. And then you can start working towards the goal or the vision or the purpose that it is that God has intended or whatever it is that you're working towards. In the beginning of the holy texts in Genesis, there's a story about the Tower of Babel. And this is the perfect example of what can happen when there is unity. So these guys set out to establish a city. And in the city, they said they're going to build a tower to reach heaven so that they could be on par with God. And they could be in this place where they were his equal. And God saw what was happening and they were on the way to achieving this. They had built a massive structure. And they were building this tower and they're moving up towards there. And God looked at this and he thought, they can achieve this. They will achieve this. Because in unity, everything is possible. But if the purpose of that unity is not for good, then all it can do is destroy. Their intentions of building this tower were intentions outside of what God intends for us, outside of the harmony of the universe and everything that God has created. They were intentions of pride, 
wanting to be equal with God or better than God. And they were building this tower and God thought, hang on a minute. If the only way to stop this is bring in some confusion. And that confusion has existed in this world from that day. God scattered them across the face of the earth. They started speaking in different languages. The ones on the left didn't understand the ones on the right. And that is why it has become so difficult in this world to build in unity. Because we have to try to get so many different cultures, so many different languages, so many different ideologies to come together and to work in unison to achieve something. And it's hard, but it doesn't mean that everybody in the world has to be in unity. Scripture says that where two or more are gathered in my name with a single purpose, with a single vision that are like-minded, there I will be in the midst of them and they will achieve great things. All we have to do is make sure, first of all, that in ourselves we are in unity, body, soul, and spirit. And then work with those around us that are of like mind, of like spirit, of like heart, so that we can work in unity to build whatever it is that we intend to build. But it's very important to take note of the starting point. The starting point is you. And some of these different opportunities that we're all involved with across different spectrums, you are still the starting point. You can't start building your team until you've built yourself. If you don't understand what it is that you want to achieve with that opportunity, then you're not in a position to go out and start building a team because what are you going to build with them? What vision are you going to share with them? How are you going to lead them? How are you going to guide them? How are you going to get them to unite with you if you yourself are not in unison, if you haven't united fully? How does that apply to an opportunity? Well, are you understanding it fully? Do you know how that opportunity can grow and how that opportunity can impact the vision that you have? Can that opportunity that you're working with or towards actually help you achieve and fulfill those dreams, those goals, those visions that you have? And when you align yourself to those things and you become united in yourself towards that cause, then it's easy to start attracting others to you. But if it's just a matter of, well, I need to get in and I need to build a team because the team is the ones that are going to build my income. Well, wrong motive, really wrong motive, you know. But if we start with the right building blocks and we build ourselves and we then help to build others that we come into unity with each other, then it's easy to start building the team because like attracts like. And when we start sharing it like that and we start building into the opportunity and building into each other, we start to see success. So it's important that we understand that we are key and we can never really build from a place of emptiness either. So make sure that you have set your, your foundation Make sure that you're building within yourself so that from the overflow, you can attract and you can build and you can help and you can encourage and you can do all the things that are necessary to start building a strong foundation in your team. And then together as a team, you've got to unite to go to the next level. So in some of the opportunities, we build in levels and we build on level one and level two and level three. Well, let's get level one done so that from level one, you've got the top level and level one working together in unity to build level two. And then when level two is established, you've got the top level, level one and level two working together in unity to build level three. And we'll achieve so much more if we do that. But if we're all just scattered and we have the scattered mindset, it's going to take a very, very long time for everybody to actually achieve that vision. But if we work methodically with each other and we build in unity, we set a strong precedent and we build a firm foundation that we build something that is lasting, that is sustainable, and that is impossible to shake. 
And if we do it with the right motive and the right intent, we will definitely achieve that success. Another amazing scripture in Ecclesiastes says that two are better than one because they get a better return for their efforts. They can help each other. They can protect each other. They can strengthen each other. They can encourage each other. And it says that a cord of three strands is not easily broken. So where we find ourselves in these different places and different opportunities, we're not meant to be there alone. We're meant to be there together so that we can build in numbers, that we can build in unity, and that in unity we can display strength to the rest of the community. When people ask, why are we so successful in what we're doing? How do we build big teams? Well, because we work together in unity. There isn't just one of us that start a project. We go in together. We have a long discussion and we say, is this worth having a look at? Are we going to put some time into this? Are we going to put energy and effort into this? Yes, okay, well, let's get four people together. And in unity, let's start building the foundation. And from there we go. You know, So it's very, very important that we start off in that place of building ourselves. I know I need to constantly be changing, constantly adapting, constantly coming into line, body, soul, and spirit, everything lining up with pure intent, with clear vision, with a clear understanding. And in that, I prepare myself to attract those around me that share the same vision, have the same heart. Maybe not everything is exactly the same, but we come into unity because we see a way together that we can achieve more. So there is power in one, in being united, in vision and in purpose, in spirit and in strength. And when we go about anything, Together, we will achieve what we set our minds to, as long as the intent is pure and not for evil. And that is all I have to share with you tonight. Beautiful. Beautiful. Thank you, Andrew. All right. Who's got any questions for Andrew? About unity and the power of one. I like that. The power or the strength of one. Bernadette, you always got questions. <laughs> Evening, everybody. Um, I don't have a question as such, but um, on that message that you've just shared now, Andrew, it's something I, I often pray about because, you know, when you see discord in families, for example, and that is the reason because of there's no unity. One wants to pull this way, one wants to pull the other way. So that is the reason why my prayer is always that, that, you know, start with me, Lord. Start with me so that I can do be that example, you know, of, of displaying what unity is. So it doesn't matter what happens. Um, it, it goes in, in line with even forgiving, you know, and, and just letting the little things go. Because that is what unity is about. You let go of the small things. You don't hold on to little things. But it was an awesome message. Thank you, Andrew. Pleasure. In the chat, the Dow says thank you. Andrew, I know you don't read the messages always and uh, like as well. well that was if a you good bring message. It back to, uh, if I bring it back to a business context, John Paul Getty, who was at one stage the richest man in the world, said that he would rather have 1% of 100 people's efforts than 100% of his own. Now, that requires unity, but it required him to start with the vision and be able to transfer that vision across to 100 people that each of them work together towards the vision, the end goal. And the success of the project, whatever it may have been, was far greater because it impacted more people's lives. If he had worked at it himself, 100% effort every single day, he probably would have never achieved the success that he did because he would have burnt himself out. He wouldn't have been successful because success is not about the money you put in the bank, but it's about how many people you take with you in that journey of success that you lift up. And it's in that place that in that, those words, I would rather have 1% of 100 people's effort than 100% of my own that he built unity in vision 
and a platform for success. Very good. Anybody else want to add anything? All right, this is going to be a short one. Andrew, thank you for your time. I know your, your time is dependent on the electricity situation where you are. Uh, before I stop, yeah, I'm going to stop the recording and then I'm going to ask a few people to stay on board. Um, like Andrew, just, just don't go off the call. I want to discuss something quickly about one of our platforms with the two of you. All right, good night, everybody. Have a good week. We're going to have a very blessed week. I've got something like 20, 27 Zoom calls scheduled. So I'm going to be busy. And for the ones that's on the calls or watching the recordings, you're going to be busy. There is good and information coming through. Are uh, you Thank seeing you, me tomorrow? Eric. You need to come tell my bathroom. Yeah, and put in your kitchen sink. <laughs> in the kitchen sink. Yes, perfect. Good. Good night, everybody. Okay. Have a good week. Good night. Bye. Good night. Bye. Thank you. Bye.